Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Droodles Blitz, and in today's video, I will be breaking into everything you'll need to know about the next update coming into World of Tanks Blitz. Probably by the time you're watching it, it's actually already been introduced into the game. There's a lot of things coming in, and most importantly, one old thing that has already been in the game in the past is coming back, the matchmaker. A lot of people have voiced their opinions on the matchmaker, including myself, including Fatness, including my friend Flossie. Just about everybody out there has voiced their opinion on the matchmaker. And guess what? Wargaming's reverting it. For those of you who said, oh, the matchmaker's better for the game, and oh, Wargaming's gonna keep it. Well, seems like, in the end of the day, Wargaming agreed that skill-based matchmaking is not the proper way to balance the game, and they are removing it. So I'm quite happy. We're gonna watch this entire video. I'm gonna tell you things that you should need to know, so let's get right into it. World of Tanks Blitz is receiving a new update on April 17th that's bringing Whoa. some changes to the game. About a month ago, we revamped the matchmaker yep. for the first time in the game's history. The new version sparked heated debates in our community. After a month of testing this version and reviewing your feedback, we decided to return to the old matchmaker system, bringing back the previous random player selection algorithm in the regular battles mode. So, here's the thing that I don't really agree with Wargaming's decision making here, and that is bringing skill-based matchmaking into the game to begin with. All Wargaming realistically had to do was ask the community in Discord, whether or whether or not skill-based matchmaking should be added into the game. And they could have asked a lot of the CCs and things like that. And in my opinion, quite easily, the answer would have been no. But instead, we had to suffer through a month of skill-based matchmaking. Wargaming has definitely done irreversible damage with this matchmaker. There are people I've talked to who have already started playing other games and have said, why did I even play Blitz to begin with? These games are way more enjoyable. So, yeah, I mean, Wargaming has definitely lost probably a decent chunk of skilled players that might not be coming back. I guarantee there will be a lot coming back. I will be playing a lot, obviously, again, once this gets released. I just personally don't know why Wargaming implemented something without even asking the community's opinion. They just silently brought it in and said, hey, here you go, suffer. So, uh, yeah, a little bit disappointing there. They definitely should have done a bit more vetting before just throwing it in. But I'm glad that finally the matchmaker is reverted. A huge shout out to everyone for your feedback and intense discussions. More tanks are changing their status from premium to collector vehicles. Yep. We can see a lot of vehicles, in fact, are becoming collectors. I don't even know if I talked about all these tanks on my uh, previous changing. It looks like even more. So let's see the list here. We have the AMX CDA 105, AMX Defender, Chieftain T95, Caliban, Chimera, Lance and C, M4190. Ryan Mathiola Scorpion. We have the SU-130 PM. IS-2SH. We have the T-34-3 Type 59. That is the T-25 Pilot 1. And to finish off, the T-54 E-2 Shark. That is quite a bit of vehicles that are being turned into collectors. In my opinion, Wargaming is basically going to be turning almost all the Tier 8s, 7s, 9s, and 10s into collectors. Do I have a problem with that? No, not really. I think it's good that Wargaming can balance premiums and change the way they play. If they either get power crept, it's better they can buff them. And let's say they, you know, let's pretend for a moment that the Concept 1B got power crept. And it wasn't very good anymore. And Wargaming buffed it. And they gave it like 4,000 DPM for some stupid reason. And because it's a premium, they're not allowed to nerf it. They just left it in the game the way it is. That would have been really bad for the game. And I'm glad that a lot of the tier 10s are collectors because if Wargaming says, hey, we want to nerf this vehicle, they can. I personally think that just because you spend money on the game shouldn't mean that what you're getting doesn't change value over time or its overall capabilities. If you buy a house in real life, guess what? That house is not going to stay the same value depending on how the neighborhood does around it. So depending on how balance goes in the game, I think that should be the same case for vehicles in the game. People might disagree with that take, people might agree, but I don't think that because you're spending money on something, you should get a greater advantage over people who don't. That's literally called pay to win, which shouldn't exist in a free to play game. Oh, we have more. Okay. AT15A, Dicker Max. Lycan, 
the Pollack, who cares about the Pollack anyway, Pharaoh, Tankenstein, Poodle, Tiger 131, T3485 Rudy, and T4485. So quite a bit. That is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and then we got 16, 18, 20. So 24 vehicles in total are being changed from premiums to collectors. Another group of vehicles is receiving updated visuals. Nice. These include the AMX 1390 and the Yagtagger. Nice. I really like the AMX 1390. It's one of my favorite tier eights. So I'm really, really excited to mess around with that vehicle with its improved graphics. The Yagtiger looks amazing here. Very excited to mess around with this as well. As well as the RU 251. Nice. RU has needed updated graphics for a while. So I'm glad to see it's getting it. T110 E3. This has really needed updated graphics. The T110E3's current legendary camo is pretty dang mediocre. In fact, we can see it right here. I mean, it's all right, but when you compare the graphics of the E4 to the E3, it's just night and day. So I'm really glad that this vehicle will be getting updated graphics. It is going to look very, very nice. T54. Nice. T54 lightweight is... Oh, wait. Now, that might be the Tier 9 T54. I think it is. It just looks like the lightweight. The lightweight already has PBR, so I stand correct. T34 and T34 1776. The 1776 looks amazing. I'm so glad they revamped the legendary camo on it. It looks really, really nice. With their legendary camos. Oh, the RU camo. I wanted to see a brief look at that. Legendary camos. So that's the T34 camo. The RU, ah, that camo's still pretty mid. I was hoping they would make it better, but that's still pretty bad. T54 camos is okay. Ooh, that looks really cool. I like that. On top of that, the SHPTK TDP100, Progetto Mod 46, IS2 Shielded, and 53 TP are receiving all new looks. Okay, let's take a quick look at these camos they are receiving because they honestly look pretty dang cool so let's wait for this to zoom past yep nobody cares so the shrek tvp camo i actually am a huge fan of i'm glad that wargaming is releasing a legendary camo for the vehicle however i'm quite disappointed that they're releasing the camo after the tank has already been released it should have been with the initial release of the tank little disappointed there the progetto already has had this legendary camo which is weird so the thing is, is that that back attachment with the, you know, the screen isn't on the current legendary camo. In fact, we can see the Progetto camo. I have it on this account here. So if we go to tier eight and we go to the Progetto, I swear I have it. Yeah. So it doesn't have that back thing, but I already have the camo. So maybe they're just giving this camo, which was already sold in the draw, the animation on the back. If not, and it's a separate camo, that's really stupid. And I'm actually going to be quite mad. Uh, we have the IS2SH camo. I like this. Looks pretty cool. The shielded camo. It's got little, like, tires on it. It almost looks like a tugboat. I'm not sure if that's what the design is, but it looks like a tugboat. And then we have the 53 TP. Uh, camo's pretty mid there. Not gonna lie. Several game modes will be returning shortly, including okay. Gravity Force, Burning yep. Games, Big Boss, and Skirmish. Okay. Another big change is an update to the buyout policy for... Yeah, a lot of you guys are not too excited about this change. I can understand why. So let's hear what's happening. Premium and collector vehicles. While the selling price will remain unchanged, the cost will double for a further buy -in. This step yeah. will encourage players to be more responsible in using collector vehicles and not rotate them freely. So I'm kind of back and forth. I agree with people that a 100% increase in the cost is stupid. It should be 50% or maybe 30%. I do think that you should lose a little bit of gold when selling collectors. And the major reason why is because I think it's a little stupid. You can sell your tank and then buy crates or whatever and just make a bad decision. So I think that people should be a little bit more conscious in selling their vehicles. But at the same time, I think it's a really bad idea to make it double. I mean, you're basically screwing over players. Now, the good news is, if you have already sold collectors, the price will not change until you buy them back. If you sell them after that, then it is going to be the double value. So, honestly, I've said this in the past a lot. You shouldn't be selling collectors to begin with. You can make whatever argument you want. Oh, I bought this. I bought that. You shouldn't be selling collectors. I... Always advise people to keep the tanks they have in their garage. Now, yes, if it's something like the Elephant and you don't care about it, then sure, you can sell it. But if you have Tier 10s or Tier 9s that you really like and you sold them to buy crates or some poor decision, I just don't do it. You know the price is doubled. 
as I always recommend, just buy gold. It's going to be cheaper in the long run. That's my personal advice. But I don't agree with the decision of what they're doing here. I think it's screwing over a lot of players. And uh, yeah, that's that's what I will say. The good news is that all premium and collector tanks sold before the update and remaining yep. in your buyout menu will be available for a buyout at old prices one time per tank. Yep. Luxury Lounge is opening its doors once again from May 3rd till May 13th, where you'll be able to exchange your... So you can get the Centurion RAAC. We have the Deluxe Limited Edition container. Excessive resources for diamonds that you can spend on valuable rewards. And from May 10th to May 20th, the Hot Pursuit event will let you get hold of either the WZ-111, Titan 54D, or T-77. Oh. Wait, what? You can get a T-77 for free. What? That sounds very interesting. Do not get the WZ-111. It is an absolute pile of turds. It's one of the most mediocre tanks ever. The T-54D is okay. T-77 is the only tank you should be going for, but we'll have to see if it's free. So, buckle up and get ready to roll. Ooh, the E3 looks so nice with its legendary camo there. Cannot wait for that. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is everything you need to know about the latest update coming into World of Tanks and everything that I could share with you information-wise. Hopefully you enjoyed the day's video. Let me know what you learned or anything like that. If there's still questions, I'll try and answer some of the comments. Either way, make sure to click that subscribe button down below, down below for the newest and most relevant information in the game. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.